Hello Rockstars, I'm Allie, your Rockstar Bar Girl, and I am coming to you guys today with a very, very, very important video. Um, we are going to be talking about the job search process, which if you have been watching any of my videos, I imagine the whole reason that you're on this channel is because you want to get a bartending job. So I figured now would be a good time to talk about that because I happen to be in between gigs and looking for a job. So since I'm going through it right now, um, all of my different tips and tricks are really fresh in my mind and I figured I would share that with you guys. Before we get started, remember to subscribe, like the video if it's useful, comment if you have any questions down below and I will respond to you. And just remember if you're using this channel as an actual like bartending instructional course as you should, remember to start with the Basics 101 videos. There are five basic things that you need to know to start bartending so definitely go over those videos and uh, there are drink recipe videos up as well. So if you've looked at the Basics 101 videos and you've looked at a few of the drink recipe videos then you probably feel pretty confident to go out there and start looking for a job. The first thing that I want you to remember when you are looking for a job is especially if you are completely unemployed. Um, this applies as well if you are working, but if this is just something that you're looking to do on the side, you might not have to go so rigorously with tip number one. But for everyone else, tip number one is while you are looking for a job, getting a job is your job. And that was one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten. And basically what it means is you should get up in the morning, 9 o'clock, take a shower, eat breakfast, get dressed, sit down in front of the computer and start uh, answering job ads on various job search sites that we'll talk about, start working on your cover letter, your resume, updating things, um, looking up neighborhoods where you might want to work, where you might go and just cold call, and we'll talk about that in a second. But you should be spending your day, for the most part, looking for a job, going on open calls, attending interviews, doing things that further you finding a job. And if you do that roughly from nine to five every day, you're gonna find that you have a lot of success. Uh, what I like to do is I usually get up in the morning, start my day, and I'll go online and look at the various job sites that I go on. Um, you guys probably all are familiar with Craigslist, which is a good resource for looking for bartending jobs. Um, but there are other websites out there um, like Monster and Indeed, and there are things like Harry, um, which are specifically designed for hiring within hospitality. I definitely recommend, especially if you have very little experience on your resume, that you register for as many of these um, sort of job recruitment sites as you possibly can. Um, you want to get your resume and your face just out there as much as possible. So just going on Craigslist might not be enough. Um, so definitely register for those sites and there you go. That's going to be something to fill up your days. Registering for those sites is going to take some time as you enter all your information in, etc. Tip number two seems kind of like a no-brainer, but I feel like it's worth mentioning because I've cost myself a lot of time by not being prepared. This tip is really important for those of you who are working. Um, if you're looking to bartend on the side or to replace what you're doing with bartending, you are currently working. Um, and so you want to make sure that your resume is up to date. When you get a new job, you tend to forget about your resume. And then when you want to look for something else, it's like, oh crap, my resume is not updated. So I would recommend that you get a head start on that by keeping an updated resume all the time because you never know when someone's going to be interested in your credentials and you want it to be up to date and you don't want to waste time with them waiting or miss the opportunity um, at an open for an open call or at an interview or something because you didn't have your resume up to date. So seems like a no-brainer but have it ready to go. In addition to having up-to-date information, sort of a side note, I strongly recommend that you try to standardize your information as best you can. What I mean by that is um, it's a good idea to have just a standard cover letter or email letter already written up that you can copy paste into every job. If you live in um, a small town, like a small area, and you know there aren't going to be that many job ads that are posted wherever you're looking um, on a day-to-day -day basis, then you have the time to 
craft a cover letter that is specific to the place that you want to work and to tweak the details of your resume so that they highlight the things that are relevant to the place that you want to work. Um, if you live in a small town then you definitely want to do that um, because you're not necessarily going to get more than one opportunity to make an impression on the staff or the manager there when you go in or when you send in your information. If you're like me and you live in a big city like New York, you know, by between in the evening when I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning, there can be as many as 30 new job ads posted. Um, so because I want to apply to as many of those as possible and apply as broadly as possible, to sit there and craft a specifically, you know, tailored letter every time and take my resume every time is not only going to be time consuming, it's not worth it, and it's probably just going to make me really frustrated and make the process not go as smooth and as efficiently as it should. So I definitely recommend that you draft up a cover letter a healthy paragraph, five, six sentences about yourself that get to the point of your credentials and what you can do, your availability, etc. And um, just have that ready. And when you come across job ads that say something specific like, we want someone who has worked with an Aloha POS system, or we work with, want someone who knows about, you know, craft beers, then you can add another line into your standard letter mentioning that you you know, have that particular qualification. But it's going to make your life a lot easier if you can literally just go through each ad that applies to you, copy paste that email address into an email, copy paste your letter, attach your resume, boom, send it off. That's going to make things a lot better. So you can spend half the day applying to jobs and then the other half of the day on open calls and interviews, which is really important. We're going to talk about that next. So when it comes to the hospitality industry, it's all about FaceTime. And I don't mean the iPhone video feature. <laughs> I mean face-to-face -face interactions. Um, that's what this business is all about. It's about interacting in person with customers, with your coworkers. Um, and so your ability to do that well is really important to what you're going to be doing. Um, so for that reason, it's really important that you get in front of a manager, a head bartender, or an owner at every opportunity. So there are a couple of ways to get that FaceTime. Um, I've mentioned before open calls. Those are important. Usually those are posted online right along with the job ads. Um, a job will say where they're located and provide a date and time for people to just show up and drop off their resume or come and fill out applications um, or speak with someone. Um, but aside from that, you want to try to get face-to-face -face time whenever you can. So one thing I like to do is if an ad is requesting email resumes, but they also posted the actual address of the location, which some bars won't do, if they actually post the name and address of the bar, then stop by. You know, you know that they're hiring. You know that a manager is going to be around most likely in the evening. So, you know, pop by. Uh, not during busy dinner, like Friday 6 p.m., but, you know, stop in at a time that, that seems appropriate and see if you can speak with a manager or um, one of the head bartenders or the owners. One thing that I really like to do is what I call cold calling, um, which is whenever I have an open call, it's like, you know, open calls aren't really interviews necessarily. Sometimes they are and like you get kind of hired right after them but a lot of times they're just a way to kind of weed people out and then set everyone up for interviews. So you know you get all gussied up and you get your resume and you get everything ready and you haul your ass all the way down to an open call just to talk to somebody for five minutes. I like to take advantage of that and make use of that time. Walk around in the neighborhood, see what other bars are really really busy um, or that look like uh, they cater to a clientele that you would enjoy working for and go in and see if a manager is available. It wouldn't hurt. You want to kind of get your resume around this as much as you can in your town or city. Uh, anyone who's hiring needs to know that you are looking. So just stop in. Uh, you got to shake off the nerves. It can be a little nerve-wracking to just do that, but remember this is a face-to-face -face business. You have to walk up to people who don't know you and say, Hi, my name is Allie. I'm here to serve you. And you can't be nervous about that. So this is great practice for doing that. Um, definitely think outside the box. One thing that I have learned is that not everyone 
In fact, a surprising amount of bars and restaurants that are hiring don't have ads out. Either they uh, just lost someone so they haven't put ads out yet, or they're just opening and they haven't gotten to that, um, or they're hoping to fill their shifts with current staff and it's just not working out. So a lot of places aren't even posting, so just pop in and you'll be surprised how many managers go, yeah, actually, you know, we are kind of looking for someone right now, and that could really work out for you. So throughout this video, you have heard me mentioning talking to the manager or ownership or head bartender. Um, that is my next tip to you. Without being rude or pushy, do try to insist on speaking to a manager. So I'll go in and rather than saying, hey, I'm here for a job, I'll just ask for a manager first. People usually know that you're there for a job. Um, they'll ask what it's about, you'll say it's about a job, they'll say, hey, you know, I can take a resume. Um, carry a bunch of copies on you, that way you can afford to give the, um, you know, bartender or whoever you're talking to a copy as well. But do follow up with that by saying something like, when will the manager be available or is there a manager usually here in the evenings, I would love to come by again. Um, find out when a manager will be around. Find out when a man what the manager's name is. Uh, you know, and if it isn't a manager, the owner, head bartender, whoever will be making the decision about hiring you, try to find out who that person is. One of the most important tips that I can leave you guys with, and it always surprises me how little people do this, uh, and that is follow up, follow up. After you did all that work of getting to speak to a manager or a bartender or an owner. Um, you want to come back and make sure that they don't just forget about meeting with you. You know, you did all that work. Don't let it be for nothing. Managers and owners are really busy people and they're not thinking about you um, and the fact that you really need a job. So you have to think about them. Um, don't be pushy. You know, give it 24 hours or so, 48 depending. Um, and, and then give them a call at the bar, send an email and say, you know, it was a pleasure meeting with you. Thank you for talking to me. I would love to have a formal interview, uh, you know, um, or uh, come in for a training session, you know, based on, you would worry it based on what you discussed with the manager. And um, let them know that you're still interested in the position and they should keep you in mind. And that will really go a long way in making sure that they don't forget about you. And uh, That is everything that I do every single time I'm looking for work. And like I said, I find it to be so effective. It really, really helps me find work very, very quickly. Um, I mentioned a couple of things in particular. I talked about cover letter and resume. I will be making more videos this week, hopefully, about uh, your resumes and your cover letters. There will be two separate videos because I'll be talking about resumes for absolute new newbies who have no hospitality experience whatsoever to put on a resume, I'll be talking to you guys about what to do in that case. And then I'll do another video for those of you who have maybe waitress or have started bartending, maybe went to bartending school, have something to put on it. We'll go from there and, and we'll also talk about cover letters. So stay tuned to make sure that you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so that you are notified as soon as those videos come out. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we talked about today, just leave a comment down below and uh, I will get back to you. So, until the next time, bye Rockstars!